I've been enjoying some new aftermarket needle selector combs. In this photo, you're looking at two different sizes. The three on the left are seven millimeter. The three on the right are five millimeter. I did a separate movie on the seven millimeter in which I also demonstrate a two color tuck hat. Five millimeter fits passive, superba, white, Orion, a lot of double bed European machines. So I'm going to experiment today with drop stitch lace on the Superba. Actually, I think I'm working on the white today. I always call them all Superbas because they're so closely related. I got these from an Etsy seller, Black Fox CNC, and I can heartily recommend them. They have treated me perfectly, and I love the combs. And here they are in three different needle spacings. And I'm going to particularly show you one of my favorite features about them. The front is good looking, but the back has little grooves to line up with your needles. And you absolutely cannot make a mistake when you align those with the needle butts. I'm going to use the comb with the most widely spaced teeth to make the easiest lace ever. We'll start with 52 stitches on the main bed and a few in work on each end of the front bed or the rubber bed. This technique will work on any machine that has two beds, but the five millimeter spaced combs, of course, are for the European machines I mentioned. Rack the beds as though we were going to knit full needle rib. In other words, even if all the needles come out, they will alternate, not hit each other because at times we are going to let quite a few needles come out. But we'll start with six in work on each end on the front bed. That will create a full needle rib border. Superb is like a lot of weight, so I'm hanging my heavy forks on each edge in addition to the comb with a substantial weight on it. If you're using a passive, you wouldn't need nearly as much weight. Those heavy forks are going to help that full needle rib at the edge knit off nicely. Here is the front carriage setting. What this means is that this carriage is set to knit stockinette. So on a brother or a passive, you would use in, and on a singer studio and piecel, you would use stockinette. Basically set for normal knitting on whatever machine. I'm using a number one weight yarn, and I did adjust the stitch size up to size five after taking this picture. The rear carriage is set on plain normal knitting also, and I used stitch size seven with my yarn. That's of course going to vary with individual yarn and machine a bit. As we start, it looks a little funny right in there. You'll soon see why. Here's how this works. We knit eight rows normally. Most of every row is stockinette. The ends are full needle rib. It's normal for the ends to feel a little bit stiff using this setup. Now I have it set up so that needle 20 will allow me to place my selector comb right in the middle of the work. Using it, I brought all those needles into working position, knit two rows, now we're going to release those stitches, and when we do, they will run, and that's what creates the lace holes that you could see a little bit of at the very beginning of the knitting. Now I'm knitting eight more rows, and I will select again. This time I'm going to move over one needle, both to create a little bit visual interest, and also because we don't really want the stitches when we drop them running all the way down to the last time. We want distinct and large stitches. There they are getting released. Eight more rows to go. You can play all around with this design. I could select and release more frequently. I could use a different interval, like I could select every other needle and then drop it. This time I'm moving to the left back to 20 as my starting stitch so I can zigzag 20 to 21 20 to 19 if I want or I can do some other things that I'll show you next each one will have a very distinctive effect quite different from the others and each one is just as easy as it gets 
By the way, I haven't been having any trouble keeping my comb in line, leaving it in the same orientation all the time. But if you did, you could select, then flip it and push down using those grooves so as not to bump anything else. My weights hit the floor and I had to go retrieve them. So just that quick, I forgot where I was. Here is how to locate your position if that happens to you. Drop the bed, find the hole. I can see it's located between these two needles, so I'm pulling them forward to mark the position, putting the beds back together. And now it's obvious that the needle on the front bed that falls between those two is the one that was last selected for stitches, and I'll select the one next to it for the next stitches. In the act of dropping the beds, of course, needles were pushed up on the front bed. If your machine will do it, the easiest thing to do rather than trying to reseat all the stitches is set the carriage to knit from hold. So that's what I did here and I was able to just continue on knitting. Now for a little bit, let's try selecting after every two rows. We'll let the stitches that I selected now, the needles that I selected now knit two rows, we'll drop them but on the same row, before knitting any more, we'll make the next selection of needles. And this time I started over to the left, close to the full needle rib section. And I'm progressively selecting, moving to the right by one stitch each time, and then knitting two rows. On one occasion while doing this, I am um, knitted four rows in between, so we'll see some variation on the finished swatch. And by the way, I'm going to try to work this into a good design for a scarf and a scooty, but you actually can use it on all sorts of things. It makes good blouses as well. A little bit more detail about what's actually happening with this fabric. When we place stitches into work or needles into work, they pick up and knit for two rows where the fingers are pointing. You can see stitches on the needles. We would be able to keep knitting with these needles, but we on purpose drop those stitches and the yarn they contain has to go somewhere. What it does is lend itself to the back bed stitches, the stockinette, so the two adjacent become enlarged and create the interesting look. The runs can only travel those two rows because that's all the stitches existed for. So this is the result we got with the every eight rows doing two lace rows. When we changed the pace, I never did use a different comb, but we made those angular selections starting at one side and moving across the work, and we selected and dropped more frequently. This is what we got. I must have made a selection mistake about here, but across this area in general, not the mistake, I did let the stitches knit for four rows and then they ran for four rows, changing the effect. And about here is where I made the selection, knitted two rows, dropped it, and then knitted two rows before making the next selection. So you can see all the little subtle variations you can come up with. It's easy as it can be. My combs did a super job and did not slip or choose the wrong needle even once. They are truly excellent. If you decide to make a scarf using the edge that I have used, here's what happens. The full needle rib area flips under because there's a completely different texture. But after that, it's quite stable. It's done the rolling it's going to do. So I can see that what I should have done is allow a few more stitches of stockinette between the full needle rib edge and the lace. And then there would be no competition for space and it would be a great finish just like that. 